John. Hi, Jessica. It's great to see you again. Great to see you. So you recently went to Armenia. So why did you decide Armenia? And before I went back to work, I wanted to do sort of some big adventure. Armenia is certainly a part of the world I've never been to. And I have a friend there. Before I traveled to Armenia, I watched a ton of YouTube videos about it. They were all actually quite excellent. So I'm not being critical of those videos. But when I was actually in Armenia, I had a lot of experience and observed a lot of things, none of which were reflected in the videos. I felt like I had some advice to give to people who might consider traveling to Armenia that I wanted to share or just some other things that people should kind of know before they get there. Did you rent a car? How did you go about transportation? Yeah, so that was a concern of mine. I, I didn't really understand until I got there. It's a, a relatively small country. There's only three million people in the whole country, and a million of those people live in the main city, Yerevan. My assumption was, you know, I'll kill a day or two in the city, but how much can you see in the city? I'm going to go out in the countryside and was going to go on big hiking adventures. Looking at that, I really felt I was going to need a rental car. I've driven in sh downtown Chicago, which, you know, if you drive in downtown Chicago, you're like, yeah, I know how to deal with city traffic. But the actual experience uh, turned out to be uh, not at all what I expected. So when I first got to the airport, I went to the Hertz rental counter. It was not a normal rental car experience. Paperwork on top of paperwork on top of paperwork. The gentleman there uh, who was getting me set up, he said, do you have an international driver's license? I don't even know what an international driver's license is. Uh, and apparently you legally are supposed to have one to drive there. But he read, went ahead and rented me the car anyway. So at this point, I think I'm driving the car illegally in our media to start off the bat since I don't have an international driver's license. What happens if my car breaks down? How am I going to get help? What if the police pull me over? I wouldn't even know how to speak or, or interact. But the main reason not to get a rental car in Armenia is that people don't drive there the way we drive elsewhere. Their traffic signals do not work the same way our traffic signals work. They have situations where you can make a left-hand turn, but there's no left arrow. Pulling their car out in traffic is a signal that I'm coming. There's all these sort of nonverbal ways of communicating that are happening in traffic. And since you weren't born there and didn't live that way, you don't understand these nonverbal clues. You will have a lot of people very angry at you, honking on their horns, screaming at you, expecting you to do something. And you're like, I can't do anything. Like I'm, I'm stuck in traffic. And then once you get out in the countryside, it is insanely rural. You're dodging cows and sheep. So the city is, is, is almost impossible to drive in and then the rural area it's very narrow one lane roads there were cases where i'm going down a one lane road and another driver's coming towards me and i'm like you're going to get off to the side right i can't get off the side because there is a cliff that <laughs> goes down 300 feet if i go off i just would not recommend it unless you grew up in a soviet republic i wouldn't recommend getting a rental car Did you feel safe specifically in Armenia? All the travel videos I'd seen seemed like a, a nice, safe place. But when I got into the city, there was police cars and their lights were flashing. In Armenia, police cars have their lights on at all times. It's just how they operate. When you're driving a car and there's a police car with his lights flashing behind you, you kind of freak out a little bit. In the city of Yerevan, there's a huge number of police cars because their lights are always flashing the way you know that the police want your attention is they have a, a mega a megaphone and they start screaming at people in armenia well if you're in a rental car and the cop is screaming at you in armenian you're gonna have a little bit of anxiety. Uh, as I was there, Armenia was safe. It felt incredibly safe. At the uh, government buildings or major tourist attractions, there would be a fair number of police officers around those buildings. But again, they weren't carrying submachine guns or anything. Overall, I, I'm not certain I've ever felt safer in a city. Was there one thing that just completely surprised you the most about visiting Armenia? 
there really was, I want to talk about the dogs. I got to Yerevan and the day I arrived, I got in very early in the morning. I couldn't check into my hotel until the afternoon. So I just started walking around the city. Very early on, I started noticing dogs everywhere. And the dogs all had a little um, tag in their ear. They didn't have a collar on. They didn't appear to belong to anyone. They were usually just hanging around, relaxing, laying down. In Yerevan, there are hundreds of stray dogs and they're just allowed to live in the city. They are tagged with the city nose knows the dog is there. They are spayed and neutered. The city effectively adopts all of these dogs. The dogs know how to navigate the city because they live there. So they understand how to use crosswalks. They wait until the light changes, cross that. Dimitri said some of the really smart ones actually learn how to use public transportation. So I just found that just absolutely charming. Again, I like said it was almost Disney-like. They weren't fighting, they weren't barking. So while I was there, I made sure I had dog treats with me. I just found that absolutely incredible. It's very odd in Armenia, 97% of the population speaks Armenian, but 70% speak Russian. If you use Google Translate, Google Translate can translate from English to Russian, but it doesn't have that for Armenia because it's it's a bit more of an obscure, less mainstream language. According to Wikipedia, 40% of the population speaks a little English. I would like to emphasize the word little. All of the menus, all of the signs, everything in the whole place is in either Armenian or it's in English, which was kind of convenient. What was the foot traffic like? Are there walkable towns? Were you walking around? What was that like? Yerevan is mind-blowing. It is so beautiful. It is filled with gardens. There are gardens everywhere. There's sculptures. They have the Cascade Complex, which everyone knows about. When you get to the top of the Cascade Complex, you can continue on. You walk on the street and then you get up to, uh, like it looks like a freeway, and you walk up there and you can see the uh, Armenian Genocide Memorial, which is you know quite a powerful thing to go see. And there's a huge sculpture garden there as well as well. The place is just vibrant and alive. You can't walk uh, 30 steps without hitting another smoothie stand or ice cream bar. There's outdoor cafes. I just filled all of my time just walking around the city and there is so much to see. They have these uh, water fountain shows, the outdoor cafes especially. Um, there's one section around the opera house where there's just outdoor cafe after outdoor cafe after outdoor cafe and bars, there's hookah bars, all had live music to draw people in. Every night I would go to these bars and I don't drink. I would go there to hear the entertainment, the live music, the singers. It was filled with families and children. And I never saw an intoxicated person. There's vendors who rent out little electric cars for children to ride in. There's uh, water fountains, and I don't think I saw them all, but there are two big water fountain shows, and one was right outside of my hotel. Water shoots up and is, is lit and timed with the music. There were literally a hundred children running through the fountains, and it was just families and children. The whole place is like a Disney World kind of thing. I felt like I was in a, a Disney movie at times. the Cascade Complex, which is the main thing everyone knows about. I would strongly encourage people to walk all the way up all of the steps. You can take the escalator up, of course, if you wanted to. You can take the escalator down inside the Cascade Complex or all of these sculptures and works of art. You can fill all of your time in the city. You really can. In America, when we walk down the street, when we make eye contact with another person, it's sort of normal human behavior to sort of nod or smile or in some way acknowledge that other person's presence. When you're in basically anywhere outside the United States, when you walk down a street and there's someone walking straight towards you, they likely are not gonna make eye contact. But if they do make eye contact, they're just gonna look at you like, 
they're looking through the back of your head. It can come off feeling rude and cold. So it doesn't mean that the people of Armenia aren't friendly. It's just that's not part of, of their culture to smile and nod at random strangers they see on the streets. Okay, so you mentioned a little bit about money earlier. So I'm curious how, how that works there. I mean, obviously you can't use American dollars, right? Right, so should you use cash or use credit cards? And the answer is you should use both. There are situations where if you're in a restaurant, any place you sit down at a restaurant, your credit card's gonna be fine and you're gonna be able to use your credit card. American Express is not as well supported there. So bring a Visa, MasterCard. They, uh, this is all of Europe. They tend to use the chip. So you just put the chip thing on and you're done. Most of the places I went to, they included a 10% um, service fee which is fine. We normally tip more than that in the United States. If you're like, oh, I'd like to leave a bigger tip, I guess you could just leave a little bit of cash, but there is no mechanism like we have in the US where you write your amount of tip or you specify how much tip. It's it's just built into the bill. If you pay with cash, uh, you can, and you're welcome to do so, and you can leave a tip of uh, whatever you're comfortable with. When you get to Armenia, the, there are money exchanges everywhere, so you don't have to worry about exchanging money at the airport or anything like that. There are exchanges all over, but the thing I got burned by is if you exchange your money, they are going to give you bills that are the equivalent of a $25 or $50 bill. But because your money goes a lot further in Armenia, that's kind of like being given a $50 or $100 bill. What happens is you go to the exchange, they give you all these giant notes, and then you face challenges spending them because the notes are too big. So if you do go to an exchange, I'd really recommend, really ask strongly. They don't give you any of these 20,000 dram notes, but having cash is good because there are many cases, small vendors, shops, markets, where, where you're gonna wanna have cash as well. There's a market there called, I believe it's called Versenage. I'm sure I butchered the name, but it's the major sort of tourist market. It's a giant city block of vendors. Uh, they primarily are selling uh, chess boards, backgammon boards. Uh, they're incredible works of art. There was a guy there with a bunch of Russian military stuff that used to be a former soviet republic so if i wanted to get a pile of actual russian military medals i could did your phone work while you were in armenia did you have to download any certain apps or anything like that well this would just be an unsponsored ad which is i switched <laughs> to google fi specifically because i like to do a lot of travel when you're traveling and you have google fi your phone just works the same as it where you have an unlimited data plan i found the cell phone phone coverage in Armenia was excellent everywhere in the city, of course, but I was shocked even when I was out in rural areas, how good the coverage was. Uh, I climbed uh, the tallest mountain in Armenia, Mount Aragats, and I got to the top of the mountain and I had cell service at the top of the mountain. So what tours would you recommend for travelers in Armenia? As many people know, Armenia was the first Christian nation in history, and it has so much incredible uh, history around that. A lot of the tours in Armenia revolve around going to see monasteries. They're like 600 AD. They're they're very ancient. They sometimes look like they were carved out of the side of a mountain. They're really cool. It's cool to see them. Frankly, once I had visited one monastery, I didn't really need to see 20 more. I'd say the number one tour when people think of going to Armenia is Garni Temple, Symphony of Stones and Gerhardt Monastery. If I only had to do one thing, I would just do that. And that's like the main tour. So Garni Temple is a temple that was built in 60 AD. It's uh, a pagan temple. It was destroyed by an earthquake, but they rebuilt it. After you see Garni Temple, you just go down the road a couple of miles and you see the Symphony of Stones. Basically, it's a wall of stone that looks like a pipe organ. And then Gerhardt Monastery is just 
absolutely stunning and beautiful. And now I also went to Corv Rap. I saw, I went to uh, Zvarnots. What was the flying experience like? Did you did you take a flight straight from Denver? My main takeaway is if you go to Armenia, under no circumstances, go directly to Armenia. Don't do it, which is what I did. Uh, first of all, there are no direct flights to Armenia. You can only get to Armenia via Europe. Once you're in Europe, you then can get a connecting flight to and from Armenia. I flew from Denver to Munich then from Munich to Vienna, and then from Vienna to Yerevan. So that was 25 hours of flight time, but didn't include getting to the airport, you know, early and having to get out of there. So all told, it was close to 30 hours of continuous travel. One of my flights, in fact, when I used the automated system, it booked a connection with only 40 minutes. And I didn't pay close enough attention when I booked it that I had accidentally done that. There's no way I could have made a 40 minute connection. I had to go through security twice, ride a bus, and have my passport checked twice just to re get to my connecting flight. A 40 minute layover isn't gonna cut it. What I would recommend if you wanna go to Armenia and fly, somewhere in Europe and spend a day or two there, then make your connection. So I would say only do Armenia as part of a larger trip where you go other places. It looks like there's only two flights out of Yerevan daily to Europe and they're at 4 a.m. and the airport was a zoo. I upgraded to business class so I was able to avoid that. Now, business class out of Armenia does not get you, you know, a, a nice seat or anything. All it does is it allows you to avoid this zoo and crowd of people. It does get your bag tagged as being first class. Upgrade to business class leaving Armenia if possible. This this has been super insightful. I think it's really great that you kind of, you got out there, you did the groundwork, and I hope people can have a more enjoyable trip and, you know, knowing what to avoid, what to expect, what to be excited about. Armenia itself, I had no idea. I think I liked it better than Paris. I would go back to there in a heartbeat. I can't wait to take my wife. It's really beautiful.